Hi, I'm Jean, and I'm going to be explaining the physics of bubbles. Bubble blowers are among the oldest and most popular of children's toys. References to bubble blowing go back to the times of ancient Greece. One of the most well-known pieces of art, bubbles, was painted by Sir John Everett Milley around 1886. In the 18th and 19th centuries, mothers gave their children leftover washing soap to blow bubbles. Even when families couldn't afford toys, children could twist wires into loops and use the soap to blow bubbles. The earliest patents for bubble blowers date back to the 1920s and the toys are still popular today. As a child, my favorite thing to do was blow bubbles, but what is really behind the physics of bubbles? First, you have to know what a bubble really is. A bubble is a pocket of air surrounded by a very thin membrane made up of three layers, a layer of water or another liquid sandwiched in between two layers of detergent. The fragile wall is just micrometers thick, even thinner than a human hair. A bubble always tries to form the shape with the minimal surface area for the volume of air it contains. Minimizing surface area means that the least energy is required to achieve that shape. The reason why you don't see pyramid or cube shaped bubbles is because, in free air, the shape with the least surface area is always a sphere. Also, according to Laplace's law, bubbles tend to be pulled into spherical shapes to minimize the surface tension of the bubble's wall. Laplace's law states that the tension on the wall of a sphere is the product of the pressure and the radius of the chamber, and the, te and the tension is inversely related to the thickness of the wall. When bubbles meet, they merge and share a common liquid wall, again, to minimize surface area. If bubbles that are the same size meet, their common wall will be flat. If they are different sizes, the smaller bubble will bulge into the larger one. Bubbles meet to form walls at an angle of 120 degrees, and if enough bubbles join, the cells will form hexagons. When a bubble is blown, the surface film contracts, and this causes the pressure inside the bubble to increase. The size of the bubble then stabilizes at a size where the gas inside won't contract any further. Bubbles pop when the water between the two layers of soap film evaporates. The lower the temperature, the longer it takes for the water molecules to Soap bubbles are colored because light is reflected from both the inner and outer surface of the bubble. When an incoming light ray strikes the outer surface of the bubble, part of the ray is reflected and the other part is transmitted to the inner surface of the soap film. It is then reflected back towards the outer surface in a direction parallel to that of the first reflected ray. Because the distances the light rays travel are different depending on the angle of the incident light and the thickness of the film, some wavelengths will interfere constructively and others destructively. As the film thickness changes, the extra distance the second ray travels changes. Constructive interference occurs when the total extra distance matches the specific wavelength of light, and destructive interference occurs when it is half a wavelength. The colors of a bubble depend on the thickness of the film. As a bubble dries out, it becomes thinner and the color changes. Thick walls cancel out longer wavelengths in the red range. As the film thins, yellow, green, and eventually blue wavelengths are canceled out. So that was the basic physics behind bubbles. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching!